Hey, She Slayers, and welcome to another episode of She Slays the Day podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Brunslick, and today is one of my favorite episodes of the entire year. It is our best of 2023, part one. Um, you know, there are 50 episodes that happen every year, um, typically two episodes a year are our best of. And so picking which episodes can go into the best of is very difficult. It's really, really difficult because there are some incredible conversations that have happened over the last year. Um, there's also some really dumb things that have come out of my mouth. So <laughs> I'm glad we don't uh, do a bloopers reel where it's just showing how unprofessional or how much I suck. Uh, yet you're still here. You're still here. Welcome to this podcast. If this is the first time you are listening uh, because someone shared it with you um, and you're like, hey, best of episodes are really great, like buffets of what is this podcast all about? And, you know, you can look back. There are so many episodes now. It's insane. I had someone reach out and ask, um, what was she asking about? She was asking for my advice on starting a course. And I was like, oh, yeah, we we did an episode on that. And I had to like, or maybe it was a podcast. I don't know. It was like episode 106, whatever that topic was. That was what the person's question was. Because I was like, oh, yeah, let me find it. And I had to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And I'm like, wow. We have done so many episodes and covered so many topics. Um, so best ofs are great because, you know, you really get that sampling, um, you know, like, and we love to talk about so many different things around here. My goal, so the podcast started with a goal of being four female chiropractors uh, because I am one and to talk about issues that come up for us in our life. And with our patients, in our marriage, as a parent. And it took about 100 episodes, 150, before we started to realize that these things that I was claiming was a female-specific podcast were really not female-specific. A lot of these issues, most of the episodes, um, are human issues. And I would even say that, so, you know, then we're like, okay, well, maybe guys, really, if you're a male chiropractor, you probably get 99% of this as well. And then we start looking back on like, you know, there's a, there's quite a few non-chiros that listen. And I don't know what they get out of the chiropractic episodes. Maybe they skip how to sell a day two or um, how to get more new patients. But like a lot of these issues that we're tackling, you know, my goal is to consistently be the best version of myself. And I'm going to clarify that for you because I think there are a lot of people out there on social media. Um, and I don't have like any one specific. I have like a an archetype type person, right? Like a, um, where it is just push harder, be your best, schedule your date nights, like just like 75 hard. That's not a, it's not an attack on anyone who schedules their date nights or 75 hard. Um, but I have realized that that's, that wasn't a balanced version of Lauren, that it is very easy for me to lean heavily into that push, go like, read the nonfiction book, become a better boss, become a better leader. Like it's, it's, that's easy for me to stick in my masculine and do that. And so like what I've learned is what I need to become a better person is to incorporate, you know, the balance and what that balance is for me. And so I love talking about uh, the structure of things. I love talking about the tactical, the logistics. I love those episodes. Actually, fun fact, um, to this day, if I am asked to be a speaker, I really struggle to give just an inspirational speech. Like I need to give like, all right, yeah, but what are the five things that they'll write down and implement on Monday? And so that's just, 
it's still just trying to balance. And so wherever you fall, maybe you're someone, and this is where I said like, no offense to anybody who's doing 75 hard or scheduling date nights, because if you're someone who has a lot of that creative flow, just not trying to control things, energy, you might need some of that alternate balance. And so we'll continue to give both. Our goal here on the podcast is to help humans be better versions of themselves. Like that's what it is. And I know that's a shitty niche, um, niche, niche. Uh, it's really, it's really not very specific. And, um, I don't know, maybe that's one of the goals in 2024. Maybe it's not, um, to broaden the, the podcast listenership to beyond just male and female chiropractors but then would we have as much fun <laughs> like would we are enjoy ourselves if we were uh, talking about vague things because there's other chiropractic or there's other podcasts doing that so like I don't know I don't really know I know that I love sharing this time with you and I love our listeners so much like the messages that I get from you guys on Instagram and the emails that I completely forget to respond to, like the praise that you guys give on the podcast, like it, it really is fuel to keep doing what you're doing. And I think as a chiropractor, you can definitely relate to this, like sometimes where you wonder, like I'm putting this effort into it and is it having that ripple effect that I want to? And so like, I, I do love you and I appreciate you being here and continuing to support the podcast. Um, I, before I started recording, I was trying to find how many downloads we had in 2023, but I think we all know I'm not the techie one of the group. So it's estimated <laughs> that the She Slays the Day podcast estimated by me, but Hey, that's kind of based on broad numbers. Okay. Uh, we've been downloaded somewhere between 80 and 96,000 times in 2023 alone. Like that's bonkers, just absolutely bonkers. And it's not me like, holy cow, the, the, these episodes, I highly recommend you go back and listen to every single one of these episodes, because as you can imagine, if I, it got chosen for our best of, you know, that that juice was worth the squeeze, go back and listen to that 60 minutes. All right. What do we got here? Um, oh, okay. So those who are new, welcome. Those who are not new, I would appreciate your support by specifically sharing this episode. Like I said, it's a great episode for people to kind of be introduced to the podcast. Um, we're going to do our listener highlight and pray, and then we will get going. So our listener highlight from someone who rated the podcast on Apple is from Dr. Alyssa. And it said, did we just become best friends? <laughs> I saw a reel on Instagram. It was Dr. Lauren, and she was speaking such truth about being a mom, a business owner, a Cairo, et cetera, but did it in such a fun and funny way that I thought, who is this doc? I clicked her profile, found her podcast link, and have been listening now for a couple of months. She brings a welcomed and appreciated sense of humor and realness to the table. I'm a fan that she's not some wackadoo Cairo behind a microphone. I find this all too prevalent in our profession, and I hate it. Rut roll. <laughs> she didn't put rut roll. I don't know how she would spell it. <laughs> um, I can see us having drinks or drinks, and I'm so happy by chance to have found her. Thanks, Doc. Keep them coming. Um, yeah, that kind of was my point of, well, I don't know if I had a point of like, yeah, I appreciate you. Know, what we're doing here is... I don't want to just keep having the same guests on that are on all the other Cairo things. And if we are going to have those people, because I do think they have value, like I want to have really intelligible conversations. Um, I want to have really deep conversations. Like my goal when I have on, you know, the big guys and girls that are, are not new to podcasts and not new to speaking is to like almost get them off their speaking notes of like, no, let's go raw. Let's Let's talk about your vulnerabilities. What did you really have to overcome? Because I feel it's so easy um, for those experienced doc docs to show up as like, I've conquered that mountain. Just listen to what I have to say. And you too can be as successful as me. And I think just think that's a boring conversation. Um, and I'm not here for that. So thank you for Dr. Alyssa who sees that, but no shame to all the other Kairos out podcasts out there. Go listen to them. I have nobody in mind, I swear. Um, so let's start with a prayer and then we're going to get into episode one because this is a longer episode. 
Dear God, thank you so much for all of the blessings in 2023. And when I say blessings, I do not mean just the good that has shown up. Um, our memory has, my memory specifically, but I think we're all kind of wired to really hang on to the negatives. It is so much easier to remember the negative. So as I reflect back on 2023 in this in this moment, like, yes, I know you moved mountains and did so many great things, um, but, but my brain, when I reflect back, immediately goes to some of the hardest moments of 2023 and getting through them. And there were times... I felt real low and I felt very hopeless. Um, I felt like an imposter. I felt like a terrible parent. I felt like a terrible leader. I just felt like a loser, <laughs> to be honest. And that's really hard uh, when you've built, you know, whether your clinic on the shoulders of you being a certain identity or whatever business on you being a certain identity, whether that's on you being intelligible, um, or you being funny and you're not feeling very funny, or you being um, cash flow smart and you look at debt or whatever it is, there are these moments where you just look and go, what am I even doing? And those are raw, hard moments. And there were plenty of humbling, raw moments in my life in 2023. And so when I thank you, of course, I thank you for the good things. But I truly look back on each of those moments and go, wow, but then look what happened next. And sometimes it wasn't like, oh my God, but then I won a million dollars. Like sometimes the lessons were slow. Sometimes the lessons that I look back on of 2023 and those things were like, those needed to happen. That needed, that part of my identity needed to break. And the longer, I know that you can experience this and relate to this, the longer we hold on to that identity that is trying to be broken. God, the, the worse those lessons need to come, the more in our face that the universe needs to be with like, you haven't learned the lesson yet. You haven't learned the lesson yet. You haven't learned the lesson yet. And so Thank you for the lessons I have learned. And I just ask, be gentle with me and everyone else listening in 2024 for those lessons that you have tried to teach us that we have not learned yet and are sure, sure just sure to get that message louder and clearer in 2024. So I thank you for those um, and be with everyone listening. In your name we pray. Amen. Okie dokie. So we are, our first best of episode is with someone who I've described as the closest thing to Jesus Christ that I've ever met in real life. Um, Dr. Simon Floriani, if you ever have the opportunity to be in the same room as him, I've gotten to multiple times and in this episode, you know, we weren't in the same room, but on Zoom and like, there is just this specialness to him, this like the brightest white aura light of shining love of anybody I've ever met. So you can have your own opinions. Like maybe he didn't pay a bill with you. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. Simon Floriani would never. Um, so this is a great episode. It is episode number 224. Uh, we do get spiritual in it. Um, but in this one, we are talking specifically more creating lifelong patience. So enjoy Dr. Simon Floriani. One of the things that is interesting, I feel like we do a good job for a new patient who's like, I'm just not ready. Well, we could do a better job, but like they might return at some point. We'll, we'll have a, somebody who like didn't sign on initially come back sometimes and be like, okay, now I'm ready. I feel like where I'm disappointed most is in our inability to create an atmosphere where when someone needs to take a break, 
because life happened, something is disconnecting. Like I know that if they called us, like somebody who was coming weekly, their family, we love them. And then they're like, "Mm, we can't afford it. We're taking a break from care. Something that we're doing, and I don't know what it is. Like we, they just don't feel welcome coming back because I think they feel like they disappointed me, which they did. Right. Yeah. Like that's yes. what yes. I'm saying. Yeah. Like, so that's one of the things that I'm like, our reactivation, if you want to put a very masculine word to like what we're talking about, sucks because basically we have let them know that weekly care for life is what you need. And we can be all like nice and like, yep, we'll be here for you whenever you're back. But they know that when they come back, the expectation is weekly for life and so they're like i don't know that i don't i just wanted to come back for a little bit and dip my toe we're like no no toe dipping (laughs) well you know could could you play the long game um you know in in um in some many of the business management texts when i got out of the chiropractic uh classic coaching systems uh i i read about other businesses and um, in the good to great book they're like you're, to to go from good to great, you have to keep stuffing systems in behind you as you grow. You can't just stay stuck on the same things. And as people change and the industry changes, we have to change. And so one of the books I read talked about how the best thing you can do is think of what is the what is the amount, uh, what is the cost to acquire a new patient, which we all can do easily. But then what do you what do you expect that client or patient to bring you in the length of their lifetime. And so rather than thinking of a plan and, and that your average patient might bring you, um, you know, two grand, five grand worth of, um, worth of income, if you looked at it and thought, this is a fifty to $100,000 asset, how does that change your view of that person in the length of their lifetime? Oh, that's a different game. Yeah, I really, I'm really going to care about everything in your life. And if this year you can't afford your care, I'm going to, I'm going to help out there because I know that when you get your cash back and your, you know, your health has improved and you're getting your new job that we've been goaling for and all those things, I was there with you in your worst time. And so you're going to be paying and that I don't have to go and find another new patient then because you're not only going to tell everyone how amazing I was for giving to you when you needed it. But then I was also there. And then you can look two years, five years, 10 years time. You're not looking for new patients then because you have got your tribe. They know you love them. And the commercial part of in your head as a business owner is saying, you're one of my $50,000 assets. And if chiropractors looked like that and thought every new patient is potentially a $50,000 asset instead of a 2000 you know, in Australia and some of the places where we coach, the average visitation is two, but that's because they see the new patient, they do a report of findings and they're gone. And some of them don't even get past the first one because their average is to only two. Right. And so it's this terrible leaking bucket of searching for new patients. What if I told you this new patient was worth 50,000 to you? What would you do different? How much, how much kinder would you be? How much effort would you put into texts and calls and and meeting them where they're at and helping them when they're down and and you know that's a different game and yet that's that's what lifetime you know a big long-term business plan is is to play the long game and that's the goal it's been the gold for me i'm like you know what and i've been you know i've been in the newspaper saying i'm suspended for being an anti-vaxxer i've got and i would have yeah, thought I've that, heard about you know, your reputation the, yeah, half the patients would have, you know, would have I've gone up against the government and against the current belief. And yet, I and at the moment, I can't even get on Instagram and promote um, my business. I can't even, I don't know, I don't email the database because I'm not sure who's on my side and who's not. And yet, the practice is busy as ever, purely from word of mouth, because the people that love me are the ones that they know that I'm a good human and that I've done the right thing for them for the last 30 years and so even the worst betrayal doesn't stick because we've built those trust bonds so thick and we've given and given to that relationship 
So that's where you get those blissful dividends. When you give and give in a different way with a different attitude instead of just trying to convert for another plan. For me, it's much bigger than just two, three, four, five thousand dollars. It's a fifty to a hundred thousand dollar asset in the lifetime of that client being in my business. It's very different practice advice than you get at a lot of masculine. I, I think I'm starting to realize yes. that a lot of the coaching within chiropractic is um, really masculine. And like, you're like, you need to grow, you need to this and like, they're either with you or against you. And, um, yeah. and I can see, yeah, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Okay, so next episode on our best of lists is episode number 217. This is episode Dr. Alessandra Colon. Uh, if you don't know who she is, she is Miss Chiropractic. Uh, she was on TLC's Crack Addict reality television series. And it was very fascinating to talk to her about just about what bringing chiropractic to, to television was like. Um, I've seen so much support for her which is well-deserved. If you haven't watched Crack Addicts, go watch it. Um, she does a really nice job and she may not do it the way you would do it, but you have to understand if you're new to this, there's a big divide. I don't like saying big divide, but like, you know, there'd be a lot, how, no matter how you show up, there was going to be some chiropractic haters. And I think the way she did it really, really minimized it. Um, and so I am a fangirl of hers. I, if I see you coming at her for the title of the show, I will be the first to like wag my finger and say, do you really think they gave a damn what she thought? Um, let's be honest, like TLC was going for a vibe here. Uh, and it was kind of probably hoping to catch the like TikTok, what is ASMR people? Um, but she nailed it. So if you haven't listened because you were judgy or you just didn't know it existed, go listen. She is going to be um, on, oh gosh, is it Good Morning America or the Today Show? Sorry. Um, she's going to be, I just saw it a couple days ago. Um, so sometime coming up soon, end of December, beginning of January, she is going to be our national representative. And I, I'm so happy that it's her and really happy it's not me. Oh my God, you guys. Could you imagine if somehow, because you know the three in me would not be able to say no to an opportunity like that, but oh boy, this girl should not be the representative because I would put my foot in my mouth immediately. So it's on her shoulders, not mine. Um, in this segment, we are talking about just kind of the burden or difficulty of representing chiropractic on television. So episode 217, Dr. Alessandra Colon. So first of all, do you know your Enneagram? Do you know what the Enneagram is? No, no, okay. well, I have no idea. I do know what it is, but I have no idea what mine is. <laughs> all right, well, right now we're between a three and a seven. So we'll figure it out by the end, don't worry. Okay, so then how did this come about? Actually, that was a question that I first asked them because I was like, wait, hold on. I got an email and... You know, they, I mean, come on, who gets an email like, hey, we'd be interested in doing a show with you. We saw one of your TikToks. And I'm thinking like- Are you serious? Yes, yeah, so it was just a TikTok. By the way- I'm so pissed I'm not on TikTok. <laughs> you don't like to think it's going to be the TikTok that's really funny and cute. No, this but, is like some like ridiculous TikTok about period cramps and stretching. Like this was, this was the TikTok you guys chose to like find me off of. And then on top of that, I'm like, yeah, because everyone- you know, Dr. Oz wants me to have me on board too. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. yep. Okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. This is funny. I really didn't take it seriously when it was first introduced to me. Um, it wasn't about to two weeks later, they like reached back out like, Hey, like we haven't heard back from you. Like <laughs> you ghosted them. Yeah. You thought it was a scam. <laughs> oh I did. I mean, come on, let's be honest. Like one in a million. This isn't right. like, I was looking for this opportunity. I wasn't like, seeking it out. I wasn't trying to um, go down this avenue. It, it was organic and it fell into my lap. And when the opportunity presented itself, it was like, you don't say no to that. Well, shoot. All right. 
what so I do now. Your personality already seems like somebody who you you wouldn't say no. You would say yes and figure out and worry about all the stuff later, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Not, okay. I'm a yes kind of person that sometimes gets me in trouble, but mm -hmm. for the most part, I jogged it. So after you said yes, and I'm sure there was, I mean, I'm sure we are glazing over all sorts of different you know, meetings and phone call. Was there a point where you went, oh shit, this is what I said yes to. And like, it sunk in the weight of it all. This isn't just about you anymore. This wasn't just like, oh, this sounds fun. Yeah. I think when production came and we actually filmed the first episode and they were all here and it's like cameras in your face and it's really happening. I, I, I think I had blinders on to that moment. I was just really excited about the opportunity, not understanding what I was really getting myself into. But once they all came and it was really happening, it was really an oh crap kind of moment. Like, wait a second, what are repercussions of this? How am I representing myself? What are things I want to see? What if I don't represent well? And not for nothing, you have this idea, okay, well, you know, the millions of people that are going to see you. And what if I something wrong? What if I'm stupid? What if I do this? What if I'm not myself? What if I'm not great? And then the worst part about it all, I think my biggest concern wasn't even like the naysayers and the people who, you know, bully behind, you know, computers and stuff like that. It was my peers. I was terrified for the reaction of my peers because some of my best friends who I think are some of the big, biggest dogs in our industry, I'm thinking, well, why not them? You know, like, Am I really cut out for this? Like, why not get that guy who's like seeing 2,000 patients a month and has a gazillion dollar practice and all these wonderful things? Why me? Um, so, yeah, I really, really, really struggled with it. Um, I, I cried a couple times, to be honest. I was like, I'm crazy for <laughs> What was I thinking? Well, and you're, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you're already committed at this point and you wouldn't have said no. Um, you know, <laughs> you wouldn't have said no. You would have had all those feelings. I imagine that some people, a lot of people would say no. Like I do think there are that fear. And I would, I would 100 percent agree with you that my fear wouldn't be because like I accepted way back in chiropractic school that there are mean people about our profession. And they're just going to be there. I mean, we encounter them at barbecues. We encounter them on TikTok. Facebook, rail outfits. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it wouldn't be those people because I've built a defense. It would be the like, I don't even know. There are sometimes I've thought about how, because all like with the podcast, if I'm doing a really chiropractic specific episode, you know, like maybe day two conversions or something, I'll talk about, like, I'll let something slip that I say in my review of findings. And I'm like, oh gosh, I wonder if I just made a bunch of chiropractors go, <gasps> you say right. what? Because what? you have your own philosophy, or maybe you're a calf payer, or maybe you're this, or maybe you're uh, Alice Orthogonal, or a Max Levine, or maybe you're a PD, I don't know. And everyone has this philosophy and maybe it wasn't educational enough. Maybe you didn't do this. So you're like, dang, man, how am I going to capture all these avenues of, of what chiropractic is, right? It's, and you just kind of have to say like, what? you know, let me just do me. Have faith. And I'm imagining that, you know, like I have a feeling that chiropractic is a little unique in that. I don't imagine that like dentists are like fighting over like, that's how you describe a cavity. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I would also imagine that production had no idea this like skeleton in the closet that chiropractic has. And so like, did you share any of your concerns about this communication burden? A lot of concerns. We had a lot of talks back and forth. One of them um, was me privately with them. Um, basically, you know, even the name of the show, that was controversial enough. And, you know, I didn't have a choice in that. That was production, which is fine. And I have to learn to honor that, right? Um, the other part was, I don't even know how to put this. The other part was, I was really, really fearful, I think at one point about what they knew in terms of chiropractic. 
So it was really funny to watch them come in. They had an idea this was going to be some Dr. Pimple Popper type thing and how they were going to operate and run the show. When they actually came on board, it was like, whoa, hold on. I think they even learned a little bit through the learning process. I think they were like, wow, we didn't even realize like how beautiful the chiropractic profession was. We had no idea what you did. And all of a sudden we're you know, doing all these things. And they're like, wait a second, you need to capture that. Hold on, you need to do this. But wait, that's hilarious. But wait, that was really educational. So they came in thinking one thing and got like 10 things. They had like everybody else, we're just neck and back, right? They didn't think about extremities or pediatric care or these extreme cases, or it was just wild. So I think in a beautiful way, actually production caught the plethora of what we can really do, right? Because we're not doing an amazing job. You do... Uh, like an amazing job of like, it's like you're a politician almost like a, a chiropractic politician because watching you just like bob and weave and make the, the subluxation chiros happy and make the rehab chiros happy. And I'm just like, how is she doing? And meanwhile, taking such a concept and it's not just the production team who's like, like you're educating all of, America in just like a sound bite, a sound. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, I have gotten a couple people that are like, oh, she's not, you know, this enough or that enough, whatever it might be. Um, and I, I don't mind, honestly, it doesn't get under my skin. I think what most people would be really, um, you know, this is at the end of the day, it's TV, right? So what people don't realize some of these cases were so difficult, so, so, so difficult. Nobody even understood the hours that went into some of these cases. Um, there were times I was even scared, to be honest. I was like, I need to go put a textbook. Call it, give me a second. <laughs> um, but most of it really was on the fly. Uh, um, I will say that much. And, you know, it did take a lot of study. And there were times where even I was caught. I did call upon my peers at some times just to be like, hey, like, am I missing any contraindications to care? You know, can I phone a friend right now? Because... I just need to make sure that I can do this and staying within our scope of practice, right? Because not all these are corrective care. Some of these patients are really difficult. And some of these, let's be honest, I can't cure it, right? But if you can give someone who's had a 10 out of 10 pain, uh, maybe pain-free for 24 hours, well, isn't that worth it? Didn't we sign up to treat our patients no matter what? So that's kind of the idea that I was going back to go back to nerve interference, go back to subluxation and go back to treating the spine. And that was where I was at the whole time in my head. Right. You probably just had to have that right down. Keep it, keep it simple. <laughs> keep Don't overcomplicate it. Yeah. Don't overcomplicate it. It's easy to. It's so easy to with these complicated cases. All right. Next up, we have... Um, another just whoa whoa episode uh this is episode 232 with dr jamal frewster and if you don't follow him on instagram i would recommend doing it because he has this presence and this confidence about the certainty with chiropractic that just makes you want to lean in and learn more um, he is practicing in Tucson and it's funny because I have, so up in Northwoods, Wisconsin, we have snowbirds. And so I was talking to a snowbird who had just gotten done with three months of three times a week. And technically he should be graduating to once a week, but he's leaving for Tucson. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, ideally you would keep your chiropractic care up. Where, where are you going again? And I wasn't really sure if this guy was even going to like, be one of those people who continued wellness care. He just kind of, no offense, had that like vibe to him that he's like, nah, this is good. I'm good. And he's like, Tucson. And I was like, oh my God, OMG, you have an opportunity to get one of the best chiropractic adjustments in the world by one of the chiros in Tucson. And so hopefully he comes to you, Jamal. Can't say his name because HIPAA. Um, but this was an awesome episode. We covered so many topics. I think this episode title is like the state of chiropractic affairs. We solve it. But just if you want to solve any issue within chiropractic, you don't need to. Uh, Jamal and I did. Um, so this segment, we're talking about bridging the philosophical divide in chiropractic. Enjoy episode 232, Dr. Jamal Frewster. So you say that chiropractic is like a confused teenager. And 
I feel um, sometimes I just get really disheartened or like, Ooh. because I feel, yes, we are, but we've got like divorced parents who like have completely different uh, philosophies and life views. And so it's like, how does that teenager find its true self when you've got such a division mm. within, Ooh. you I know, like I got a little sassy um, last a couple of days ago because I should not have such a hard time finding an associate. I am an hour and a half from a school. Um Damn. But yeah, it's, but it's Northwestern. <laughs> and so like I interview students, you know, and they're like, I'm like, you know, so are you into pediatrics and family practice? And they're like, more like rehab. And I'm like, I know what that word means. I know exactly what that <laughs> word means. Okay, I'm not against it. You're just not. So, I know what so, that word means. I know what that means. I know what that means. <laughs> Great question. Uh, I think continuing with that analogy, there can be divorced parents. And if you were to look at generations, my boy, Dr. Ali Orji, who I work with, he says, you know, reflex chiropractic, like it's, it's like it's fourth generation of individuals. You had the pioneers that were in the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s, and they got the big idea because you, you used to only go to school for as long as you needed to, to grasp the, the big idea. That could only just be like a few fucking weeks. It wasn't you have to go to three and a half years. You have to have all these. It wasn't, it wasn't that. And they were getting better healing results than we are as a unit now. What does that mean? I think it means that there's a gap. And reflecting on your question, it's like you can appreciate there's two divorced parents, two life philosophies. Learn from what you can from both. But what about grandma and grandpa? What about great grandma and grandpa? What about our history? What about our roots? So if we can go back to like the people, the the pioneers that were holding shit down during the Spanish flu, when the United States was losing their minds and losing their shit, where medical doctors, they're like, you know, fuck it. Like, we don't get it. We don't know. And they would ship them to like uh, Spears Painless Systems Hospital, uh, I believe in Colorado, or these chiropractic hospitals. They would bring the sickest of the sick, wheel them in in a chair, experiencing polo, experiencing Spanish flu, experiencing whatever it is. And they would walk out that bitch. Like they would walk out healthier because why the original pioneers were connected to a vigor and energy and image a possibility a knowingness a certainty that they can help people help themselves get better and heal when there wasn't like all the gadgets and gizmos and things as well around here too at this time which is why I think you know things that you're doing doc are so important just so you can expose more students to things it's like, I'm, a, I'm out in Arizona. I wish it'd be nice if there was a school out here. Maybe we're going to need to be the ones to bring it to Arizona. That's a whole nother conversation. But I think it's so important because you expose people to more of what's possible. And then when we're able to show up in different seminars or different things, students are like, wow, I didn't know that was possible. But I also think that it takes this generation of chiropractors to go into the schools and be like, hey, like, this is possible. It's not just rehab like sure that can be an expression of it and you know i just want to clarify for anyone that may listen like you know i can appreciate the diversity in chiropractic mm -hmm. and i think it's also important you can be diverse in chiropractic however it's important for us to know our roots otherwise you're not going to know who you are and that's important from your lineage of being a chiropractor to understand have respect for and understand things and i think that's a microcosm of a lot of humans don't know their blood lineage or their family line me in particular i met my great grandfather on my dad's side and you know i was like i think maybe like 10 or 11 but i didn't get the chance to like be around him much I didn't meet the other chance to meet any of my great grandparents besides him. But if you go beyond that, like my great, great, great parents, like in understanding like my history line, like I know that I come from slavery on my dad's side, being from the deep South. And I know that I come from deep poverty on the Incan side or the Quechuan side and my Peruvian side in Peru. But there was a fracturing in the line and we don't know where we are versus the Maori, the Maori. They're in New Zealand. They know 13 to 14 generations, like by name, like, and they have the haka, they have rituals that ground them into themselves. I think there's been so much trauma to this teenager that is chiropractic that 
from the AMA, from society, from us almost being destroyed in the 70s and 80s with the Wilkes case and things too. And then after the Wilkes case happened, we were like, yay, we made it. We're our own distinct profession. Let's charge insurance like, like hell. The Mercedes 80s happened. And then one of my brothers who's been in the game 40 years or so, Dr. Tom Nottingham, you know, he he was in tears one day at, a, at the Delt House at my chapter. He's like, I'm sorry. He's like, we dropped the ball. He's like, we got, he's like, he, from his perspective, they got comfortable and they stopped mm -hmm. like venturing out and doing the damn thing and serving. And then I think now we're, we're like a, we're a teenager with like a fractured like foot or something. Take your pick on what it is. We don't know who we are. We've been traumatized. We're in that stress state. And I'd even say we got cancer because there's parts of the body that's there attacking itself. And that's the war on technique and philosophy and chiropractic. So it's like, well, of course, people don't fucking know what we do. Of course, people are making TikToks and literally just laughing at this, literally making a joke of uh, the adjustment, which is something that's so fucking powerful and just an extension of what we do. But it's like, I've, there's legends that are like, yo, put your soul into that. And people are like, <laughs> yeah, boom, like just throwing like a head across. And I'm just like, y'all ain't shit. All right. We only have two more clips left in this episode and they're still so good. All right. So you might recognize this last name a little bit, but episode 196 is Dr. Jennifer Barham Floriani. Um, yeah, they were both on. And I don't know how these two souls found each other. They are a divine match because both of them, like individually, they're incredible. Um, and so they each got their own episode and they earned their way onto the best of. So they actually, if you love both of them, which you should, because they're both incredible, they are, you know, be on the lookout because they are going to be doing uh, weekend trainings in the U.S., um, also in Europe and maybe Australia, I don't know. Um, but I know they've done a couple in Europe and they've definitely done a couple in the U S and so be looking in 2024 for that. I absolutely want to get to one because again, like I said, just being around them, your skill set as a chiropractor, you will leave just feeling so much more confident in how you're showing up for patients and mamas and babies. Like just a weekend full of love and training. So be on the lookout for those. I'll try and share them on Instagram as I see them. Um, and yeah, that's on my goal to do in 2024. So in episode 196 with Dr. Jennifer Barham Floriani, we are talking about freedom of speech within chiropractic. Enjoy. You know, at times it, it took me a lot to get over that because, you know, I mean, I grew up in this profession. I was a chiropractic baby. And, you know, since I was, little um you know I was like this poster child for personal development the youngest of a big family where my dad had made a transition from a radiographer to a chiropractor my mum had been a nurse and and when I was born they were in this whole stage of oh my gosh you know this is what health is about and and all this learning curve for them so I had the beauty of going to a lot of seminars and and having this you know, like GPS on kind of like setting goals and a vision. And it was, it always involved chiropractic. You know, everything I am is because of our profession. And I wanted to be a chiropractor. I wanted to be an author. I wanted to marry a chiropractor. I wanted to have four sons. You know, I wanted to adjust celebrities. I wanted all of these things that, you know, and a big part of that was I wanted every family to have chiropractic as their leading healthcare choice. Mm -hmm. And that's still such a massive driver for me because I, you know, growing up in a family practice, I saw the power of that from such a little age. And so, you know, I've been disillusioned at times with chiropractors who just, you know, you don't when they want to be the primary family doctor no. or people. And, and and when the conflict would arise like in COVID, they would just scurry away. And as they scurried away, you know, they would throw rocks at you and criticize you. And I guess, 
I, that's one of the things I love about Americans is because, you know, and this is a generalization, but what I see is a lot of Americans are really ready to get in the ring and to fight and to stand by the people who are like-minded for them. Whereas, you know, I love Australians, Lauren, like we're, you know, we're, we're, we're generous and we're kind and we're playful and all of those things. But I don't know whether it's our colonial convict origins, but when a conflict happens, we, we don't stick together. And so I think that there was a lot of heartache for me with our profession, you know, because Simon had been the president of the, the association for a long time. And, you know, this book that I'd written you know, there was such great feedback for a while of, oh my goodness, you know, I love nothing more than seeing this pregnant mom as a new patient come in and she's got your book under her arm. And I just, Mm -hmm. I just know she's got it, you know? And I was like, that's so fantastic. That's what I love is to, you know, to help edify and build our profession. And then, you know, I think when, just to give you some backstory, when uh so I'd spoken at Cal Jam you know with Billy D and then a few years later Simon was speaking and he was doing a promo with Billy D for Cal Jam and this is how he lost his well how his license was suspended the first time so in that interview with Billy D as it happens you know you get in this this moment of passion yeah. And a lot of the legislation had just changed in Australia where chiropractors were not allowed to talk about vaccines anymore. And, you know, some of our dearest friends were involved in that happening. And and for me, that was just like, you know, like the nail in the cross. This is an ignorant American question, but like you, there's no freedom of speech stuff in like in general. In Australia, no, and see, right? this is the big distinction between America and Australia. I think because America, and you know, this is my limited understanding, is you know, is etched in that in that constitution that you have, which to my understanding is also, you know, has a real it's God-given rights. You mm-hmm. know, there is that religious or that component to it. As mm-hmm. a monarchy, you know, I see the same thing in Canada. We don't have that. There's nothing to lean back on. We don't have that strong foundation of these are my rights. You know, these are my God-given rights. And so I used to, when I'd come to America to speak and I'd hear all these Americans on stage going, guard this and guard that. And I'd be like, you guys are freaks. Like, why (laughs) would you get on stage and talk about God? And this is before, you know, some things happened for me and my relationship with God is very different now. But I was like that's really weird. You know, we don't have that in Australia. We don't really, you know. Okay. Final episode of part one, best of 2023. And this is a first time, um, in the past. So how we pick our segments are downloads, uh, reviews and like shares, um, And so like, honestly, there are people who have big, big expansive reaches on social media or email lists who didn't make it. So this is not like a popularity contest, but I have never included a solo episode. And when we looked at the engagement of episode 222, which is me talking on numbers, um, looking at the success of this episode and how engaged people were and sending DMs and how this episode spoke to people, it I knew it needed to be included included. So uh, I I don't I don't mean this to be a humble brag at all, but this episode is specifically talking about numbers. Um, now this clip, might be kind of like, oh, I don't really understand why, like, okay, cool. We're talking about what stats to keep at your clinic to be able to assess when a number is down, um, how to assess what action steps need to be taken. I don't think that is like, I don't think this clip can fully demonstrate why so many chiropractors related to this episode. Um, In this episode, I in addition to giving you very tangible things, because like I said, that's what I want. I want you to have tangible things that you can implement right away. 
uh, I really shared kind of the struggle that chiropractors deal with, with their identity and comparing their numbers to their worth and how, how hard of a life that can be when we're consistently comparing our worth to a metric. So even though in the episode we talk about metrics and how to improve them, I just want you to know that your numbers don't mean shit. They really don't like, and the sooner that chiropractors can learn that like the chiropractor seeing a thousand a week is not better than you if you're seeing a hundred a week. And like the sooner we can actually own that, are their finances potentially different than yours? Yeah, sure. Maybe. I don't know. I'm sure there are chiropractors who don't have the profitability. Like I've definitely seen that. Um, but are they better? And I think as soon as we can start going like, okay, numbers do not equal a good or bad chiropractor. Numbers do not equal. And like, you're more than a chiropractor. Like, okay, so let's say you're a bad chiropractor. Fine. <laughs> say you adjust two people a week. Um, okay. Are you a bad chiropractor? Are you a bad human? Like, it's just the, the sooner we can just get away from this identity, I think is really helpful. So if that resonates with you at all, go back and listen to episode 222 and um, yeah, enjoy. All right. So here is me, Dr. Lauren Brunswick, talking about stats and how to correct them. So it's that first step of like, okay, let's set all ego aside and really get to the root of like, all right, what are you freaking out about? What number is down for you? Now, this tends to be one of a couple different numbers that someone's going to be freaking out about. So one is money. Like you didn't bring in as much money as you normally do. Now that's a big one. <laughs> like, and to that, I would go like, okay, I've had those years where my husband has come home from our like annual tax thing. I don't go to it anymore. I, am I terrible? I am. Um, I just sent him because I just felt like I was this weird figurehead that was showing up to the annual tax meeting. Like, hello, I'm here for my signature. I don't know why I'm here. Um, because Kirby and I talk about all of our money goals and things at home and he's just the representative at that meeting. So, but I remember one year where he came home and the amount we were reporting as our like income was less for the first time than every single year prior. And I was like, oh, we're poor. <laughs> like, oh my God, we made $50,000 less this year. And Kirby's like, no, not even remotely. We hit it better. And I was like, but, but according to the taxes, we made less money. And he's like, you cannot look at that number and care. And so like, there was ego in that, right? Like I struggled for a minute being like, but like this, this, you know, so we're going to set all this ego aside. And we're going to go like, okay, so is it money? We've got some areas, you know, is that what's freaking you out? Are you freaking out because you aren't getting new patients? Are you freaking out because your weekly visits are down? Now, most people, when they have, when you've been in practice long enough, you're going to have a month, a quarter, or a year where numbers are down. And usually you're freaking out about money being down or weekly visits being down. and you know, they kind of go hand in hand. So a lot of times if money's down, so is weekly visits. So this is where you go, all right, what number triggered me? Okay. So step one, which number am I freaking out about? Is it a revenue number or is it a weekly visit number? Now, if it's a weekly visit number, I can tell you that I could wave a magic wand or you could wave a magic wand at your own clinic and offer substantially discounted adjustments and add a hundred people to your week. And I'd go, does it feel good? Or, you know, you could have a patient appreciation day where you give away a bunch of adjustments, you know, 
now do you feel fixed? And so it's like a lot of times we get so fixated on the weekly visit number. And I do too, because it's the number that we like to brag about as Kairos. Oh, I see. Oh, how many people do yours? This is your clinic. See, but like, that's not a true number of the success of your business. It's not a true number of the trajectory of your business. You know, like there are clinics that see a lot less people than I do and make a lot more money than I do because their office visit average is two or three times what ours is. Like they just, they just run a different model. So looking at that, like which number is triggering you and why is it triggering you? Okay. Now, if you have somebody smart in your life, like a Kirby, um, maybe you have to pay them. So maybe they're accountant, maybe they're a business coach, something like this. Um, the next step that's going to happen is like going like, okay, let's start to dig into that number a little bit. And let's start looking at your stats. So we keep a lot of stats at our clinic. And the reason we keep a lot of stats is for this moment in time right now. It's like all the stars are aligning and um, it's when we go, oh shit. Anytime that we have gone like, why are numbers down? We immediately go to our stats. Stats are great, but you don't really need them when everything is like, popping bottles of champagne and hitting bonuses and things like that. So when we want to go, okay, what is behind low uh, money? What is behind the low weekly visits? We start with our spreadsheet. So we keep stats on every new patient phone call that comes in. So, and yeah, like, okay, you, all of you, if you are a CA, you're going like, oh my God, I hope my boss doesn't listen to this. And if you're, bo if you're the boss, um, you're going, oh my God, my front desk would kill me if I asked them to keep this. Mm, I don't know. Maybe you could get something less meaningful off. If that's really true, maybe you could get something less meaningful off their to-do list because I think stats are important. So we keep stats on every new patient phone call that happens, whether they get on or not. So we have the date. We don't necessarily have the name because if somebody doesn't get on, we may just put like Jane Doe, John Doe, or Baby Doe. Like basically, was it an adult male looking to get on? Was it an adult female looking to get on? Was it an adult calling for their kid? And then if they don't get on, we put a general reason. Uh, wanted to get adjusted that day didn't take, or we didn't take their insurance. Um, I don't know. Why else does somebody else get on or not get on? I don't know. I don't know. Pretty much it comes down to those two reasons. So that was a really helpful step for us for a long time uh, because it helped us. We looked and we noticed that the percentage of patients that we're getting on. Oh, and where did they hear about us anytime that they can, um, that we can get that, you know, if they're like, I hate you, you don't take my insurance. We're not like, okay, but how did you hear about us? Uh, so if it's organic, we get that also. And so we found that, um, Google ads was actually messing with our new patients. Uh, we were getting a lot of new patient phone calls. And when we looked at like, wow, there's a pretty high percentage that don't get on. These people must not be calling because they know anything about us. Because like, if you're calling because you your kid has ADHD or you have anxiety, or you know, if you've seen our Facebook content, you're not like all of a sudden surprised that like, well, I can't get cracked today, you know, like type of thing. So we kind of were able to look at that stat and go, oh, okay, we're having a lot of phone calls because people are calling our number because we're the number one that one, the number one listing that comes up for chiropractor near me. And so we had to go like, okay, do we want just a bunch of these phone calls? And we decided like, no, we want qualified leads. So we took money off of Google and put it on Facebook because basically Facebook is where they're going to be a little more qualified or pre-filtered lead to call our office. So we keep stats on, did they sign on for day or did they sign up for day one or not? Who took that phone call by the way, because as we get to training, 
These are good stats. Um, so who took the phone call? Does one CA have a higher percentage of getting people on as a new patient than others? Um, did they show up for day one? Okay. How much time, don't get overwhelmed, okay? How much time was in between the phone call and the day one? Does our day one show up rate uh, suffer when we get past seven days or past nine days or past four days? What do we do with that information? What's our day two show up rate? Now, our day two show up rate is like 99 to 100%, which yours should be too. But if it's not, where do we need to train? We need to train on day one. So what's our day two conversion? Did that day two go straight into an active care plan of three times a week for a certain number of months? If so, how many months? Did they pay up front or did they pay our weekly option? Or was it kind of like an add-on situation where the kid is asymptomatic, mom is what a, you know, like we're, we're just throwing the kid on with wellness, okay? So like those are the kind of stats that we start to look at. You know, if we're like, well, we had 37 new patients that month. And then we look and we go, oh, like 30 of them. We were like doing a big push that month for like just adding wellness family members. And so like 30 of them just got added onto weekly care with the family. Like, duh, that that is going to answer like, wait, we had a bunch of new patients, but the money didn't pour in. It's a different situation, right? Um, or the weekly visits didn't go up a ton. Well, because you had a bunch of people starting at once a week instead of three. 30 people starting at once a week versus 30 people starting at three times a week. Huge difference that you're going to see in numbers. We look at the percentage. We keep track of the percentage of people that make it all the way through their care plan and graduate to wellness. Again, that's another stat that's pretty high for us. Um, that's important to me because... Again, from a training standpoint, um, you may have an associate who is nailing day two conversions, but okay, is it easy to nail a $2,000 three times a week for four months conversation? No, it is not. Is it easier than a lot of people think it is? Yes, it is. Because the patient has a problem right now and they want you to fix it. So like, fine, fine, fine. I'm getting migraines three times a week, four months. Sure, 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 whatever. Here's my credit card. Get rid of my migraine. Now, three weeks in or two and a half months in when they're not getting migraines anymore, are they understanding? Did you actually teach them the bigger picture? The bigger picture that as soon as the symptom's gone, no, they're not done yet. There's still work to be done. Did that conversation actually happen in day two? Because it doesn't have to happen in day two to get them to sign on for care, but it does need to happen on the day two conversation in order for them to stick around. So looking at that percentage of like, did people break up with us before they even finish their care plan? Um, we track breakups, you know, like how many families have we had uh, leave care? Is it more than normal? And then we overall track our percentage of wellness versus percentage of active care people. Stats really tell you where to go next. That's why we keep stats because like I said, when things are good, I don't look at the stats. When we are going, um, why have we had two months where we're less than average revenue? We go straight to our stats and we go like, okay, are new patients down? Nope, it's not new patients. Are breakups up? Nope, it's not that. Is this, and when you just start looking at, you know, where, where things are going. I was talking to a doc who was communicating that they had massive, like 400 and some new patients this year so far in half a year, but their numbers are actually down. And so when we started talking about she, you know, and she was like, I'm going to pull every chart to find out where did they go? And it's like, well, do you have to pull every chart? Well, if you're not keeping these kind of stats, then yeah. You might have, you might spend three, four weeks looking, having to go down this huge rabbit hole, figuring out like, okay, how many visits did they stick around for? Or you could just build a nice little spreadsheet and keep those stats now. So that's what I would say. So the stats will then tell you what needs to happen next. So let's say that new patients are just down. Okay. Well, are active care new patients down? 
or wellness care, like all together. Like, like I said, we've had times where our new patients weren't down, but there was just a lot of wellness people getting on. Um, so you want to start looking at your marketing. This is where, you know, when we've had times, that's where, how we figured out, like we're spending too much in Google and not enough on Facebook because we're getting these not qualified people calling the clinic, wasting time. Also just like kind of bumming out your CAs, right? Like if you have one out of three new patient phone calls is like, oh no, I want to get in somewhere today. And you're like, oh, but we're special. Why did, why did, like, you know, we love the new patient phone calls who are like, oh, my friend goes there. Like, yep, I understand. If I have to wait two weeks, I know I'm going to have to come multiple times. I know you don't take my insurance. That's all fine. Like, those are the new patients you want. So like, what, what's been going on with your marketing? Is it stagnant? Is it lame? How are you showing up? Like looking at what is going on with your marketing are you trying to do too much yourself and not delegate to other people? You know, that's a big reason that marketing will tend to suffer is if you're still holding on to this idea of it needing to be perfect and you're the only one who can be perfect with it. Our staff, I mean, I love them to death, but like they put out more imperfect content than I put out content at all. Okay. And I just want to reiterate this, that this is not a judgment on them. Okay. Like, my staff puts out 90%, maybe more, maybe 95% of the content that happens at our clinic than I do. I do a teeny tiny percentage. Now, if I was responsible for 100% of the content, would I like the content better? Of course it would, because like, I'm amazing. No, like, right? Like we know it would be exactly what our vision for it is. The only reason I call their content imperfect is be anytime it goes against maybe what my vision of what I would have done, or I would have changed the lighting on that. I would have rephrased that, but they're not big things. It's just like little nitpicky perfection -y stuff. And so like getting over that and being like, boom, like quantity, put quantity out there. Are you doing enough in that? You know, taking a look at where your new patients are coming from, are you getting any referrals? I mean, there are clinics that don't do barely any marketing because they just get so many referrals. How's your referral situation going? Do you guys need to look at your system and procedure for referrals and amp it up a little bit? How's your table talk? You know, for those referrals, um, table talk is also a big one for people quitting care. So like, all right, kind of, all right, people are quitting or, um, you know, if they're quitting, did you do a really awesome day too? And then kind of just trusted that they got it. Like light bulb went off. They got the big picture because they may have gotten it. But like, if it's been six months, they may have forgotten it by now. So like, how's your table talk doing? Are you talking about the nervous system? You know, it's really hard when you have a patient who's been around for six years. You're like, dude, if I talk to them about their nervous system, they are going to like bitch slap me. But like, People are busy and you don't have to be weird about it. Just, just slip it in. Have I talked about table talk on the podcast? I don't know. I don't, I know there's a Patreon episode on it, but I don't know if we have, I'll bring someone on to talk about table talk because I do not think that I am the greatest person in the world on it at all. Um, but we'll, we'll, I'll look for a guest. So, but just have you been asking more of your patients? So kind of back to the, the dropping off, do you have a high percentage of breakups right now? This tends to come from when you're asking more than you're giving. So did you just go from refer a friend to give us a testimonial, to write a Google review, to can we take pictures? Can we do this? Like, are you just taking too much of your patients without giving back? And then a lot of other things in your stats may come down to, do you need to do some training? So... This can be anywhere from like, how's your day one phone call going? How's your day one tour going? How's your day one doctor talk going? How's your day two going? How's your, like, how's your first or well, second adjustment? So your day three, like, how's the re-exams? How is all that table talk in between? How are your front desk, like communicating? A lot of stuff comes down to, especially the longer you've been in practice, it is, it, it's not going to be huge things. And that's unfortunate. Like, I need you to hear this. So if you're kind of like zoning out, like, hey, wake up for a sec. 
the longer you're in practice, the less likely it is that the reason your numbers are down is because there's this massive error that you just need to like find the like the hole in the ship that is allowing a ton of water in. Unfortunately, a lot of times, the longer you've been in practice, the more it's these little, these little things, these things that are going to move, move the needle 1%, move the needle 3%, 5%, little things um, to do. And so it gets harder and harder, the longer you're in practice to go like, I don't know what lever to pull. Like, is it new patients? Is it training? Is it our marketing? Is it our table talk? Okay, that concludes part one of our best of 2023 episodes. Thank you again to everyone who has downloaded and shared the podcast. Please take a moment to share it and rate the podcast. Um, if you have ideas for who you want to see on the show, chiropractor, not chiropractor, male, female, I don't care what the topic is, um, I'm always open for suggestions uh, slide into my DMs. I will tell you if you are pitching yourself, I am going to ask for um, where I can listen to you on a previous podcast because I am highly protective of quality on the show. So, like, you just might if you're if you decide to pitch yourself, I want to prepare you ahead of time that you're, I'm going to need to have listened to you or see you somewhere else first um, because you know what there there can there can be bad there can be bad guests. I'm sorry. I'm not saying you're a bad guest. I'm just saying it has happened before and it is awkward. So to end this episode on an awkward note, cheers to 2023. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I can't wait for you to see what we have for episode part two of the best of 2023 next week. Bye, She Slayers. Bye.